Thanks to Samsung for sponsoring a portion of this video. Folks, it is coming right up. You getting excited yet? I know I am. I look forward to doing this video every year. Let's talk through everything you need to know to make sure the big game looks its absolute best on your TV. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and ever since Fox Sports hosted me in Miami, Florida and took me behind the scenes of the broadcast production of Super Bowl LIV, I feel like it's become one of my most important missions to make sure you are totally dialed in for the best looking football you'll watch all year. Clock's ticking, so let's get into it. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to pick the best signal or stream for the game. We'll talk about how to make sure there isn't too much delay on your feed. Then we'll get into some TV settings that'll have the game looking its best and talk about some of the audio settings you may wanna think about so you get sound that brings the excitement at the stadium right into your own home. So first off, I am beyond excited to let you know that the game will be broadcast in 4K HDR and 1080p HDR this year. You know, one day that'll just be the norm, but after I watched Fox Sports do it in real time back in 2020, we didn't get 4K or HDR again until Fox got the broadcast rights back in 2023. So until CBS's announcement on January 9th, we didn't know if we'd get super high video quality again. And I am so stoked that many of us will. Which brings us to the first thing we should talk about. How should you watch the game this year if you have options? If you don't have broadband internet available to you, then you'll probably be watching on cable, satellite, or maybe over the air with an antenna. And we'll go through how to make sure you get the best experience by watching it that way. But if you've got broadband internet available, you have more options available to you. So let's break down how you should watch by priority. If your priority is getting the best possible video quality, there are both streaming options and cable satellite options. Now I know some of you out there are gonna want to get that 4K HDR signal, especially if you have a 4K or 8K TV, and I'll talk about how to get it. But you may wanna know that the 4K signal is gonna be commercially upscaled from 1080p. Now the commercial grade upscalers that CBS uses will make for a very clear 4K signal for your 4K TV. But if you have a premium 4K or even 8K TV, its built-in upscaler will make that 1080p signal look awesome. And honestly, it's the HDR signal that's really gonna make the picture pop. So don't be too fixated on getting the 4K version. The full 1080p HD version, especially with HDR, is gonna look better than the 1080i non-HDR version that will hit your CBS affiliate, whether you get that over the air with an antenna or through your cable or satellite operator. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For streaming, I'm gonna suggest YouTube TV for the best 4K HDR option because it's likely to be stable and it's widely available on the most smart TVs and streaming devices. You could also use DirecTV Stream or potentially Hulu Live TV, but I'm less confident about the experience and consistency of picture quality from those services across the varying different TVs and streaming devices. Now, you would think that Paramount Plus, which is owned and operated by CBS, would get the 4K HDR feed, but it'll be showing the 1080p HDR feed, which is kind of weird. Not that I mind, that feed is gonna look awesome. I would probably not use Sling TV if you wanted to get the best picture quality for this event, but take a look at what Fubo says it'll support because that could end up being a solid streaming option as well. No matter which of those streaming services you use though, you'll need to make sure you're signed up for a subscription tier that gets you 4K and or HDR support and that there's at least HDR support for that app on your streaming device, whether that's a, your TV or an external stick or box. That's gonna take a little bit of research, but I think it's worth it. Now, outside of streaming, it looks like the 4K HDR feed will be available through select cable and satellite providers too, like Comcast Xfinity, Dish Network, and DirecTV, if they offer a special 4K channel to you. And if they do, you'll need to have the 4K converter box for those providers to get it as well. So check with your cable or satellite operator, make sure that you have access to the 4K channel, you might need to pay extra for that, and make sure you've got the right converter box to get it to your TV. So to wrap up this portion, if streaming the game is an option for you, I say do that. 
I think it's worth even a one month or trial subscription just to see the best video quality from this game. You can always cancel later. If you're gonna use cable or satellite, try to get the premium 4K or 1080p HDR version of the game through the special channel available and make sure you have the right converter box to receive it. Do that now so that you don't have to scramble days before the game. The big game, you know the one I'm talking about. It's right around the corner, which means it is 100% time to up your TV game. The big game deserves a big, gorgeous TV. And for that, Samsung has you covered. No other brand has more options for 75 inch and larger screen sizes, meaning the perfect Samsung TV is ready and waiting for you. The best TVs for sports need top-notch upscaling, excellent picture processing, smooth motion resolution, punchy HDR brightness, rich vivid color, wide viewing angles, and effective anti-glare. And the bigger the better. That's a long list, but the Samsung Neo QLED lineup ticks every one of those boxes. And unlike the thousands of shows and movies you can stream directly on your Samsung TV every day, sports broadcasts are rarely available in 4K, which means you'll want Samsung's outstanding AI upscaling for a smooth and detailed picture. Samsung's motion processing offers clear, blur-free, fast motion sports viewing, and the Neo QLED line's high brightness HDR processing adds brilliant realism to the on-field action. The stadium lights sparkling off the player's helmets, dazzling. Every blade of grass in fine detail, captivating, especially on this 98 inch model. And because you're gonna be hosting the best game day party of the year, you'll want a TV that makes every seat in the house the best seat in the house. Samsung's best in class anti-glare with ultra viewing angle technology makes that possible. No joke, it's the best I've seen. Samsung's Neo QLED 8K is future-proofed with 8K resolution and is versatile enough to handle game day and movie night. All of your content will look outstanding on a Samsung Neo QLED 8K. Building out your dedicated media space, Samsung's OLED models offer an immersive cinematic experience in addition to being a tremendous TV for sports and gaming. And if you want a backyard tailgate theme, Samsung's Terrace TV lineup is bright enough to light up your outdoor entertainment spaces and weather resistant too, so it can live outside ready to party when you are. You'll find a link to the best deals on Samsung TVs for game day down in the description. Thanks again to Samsung for sponsoring this portion of our video. What if your priority is the shortest time delay? I mean, I think many of us have experienced hearing our neighbors cheering and screaming loudly like up to 30 or 40 seconds before we see the same big action on our screen. And that's because the feed we're watching is so far behind the Joneses across the street. Now folks, I'm sorry to say that I don't have the magic formula for knowing which feed is going to be the least time delayed. I suspect that the over the air broadcast that you'd get with an antenna is probably gonna be the least delayed. At least that's been the case in my experience. So maybe not the best picture quality, but usually the least delayed. I have also heard reports that YouTube TV is actually working on reducing that delay itself. So for streaming options, again, that's another reason to go with YouTube TV. But if you wanna kinda of test things out, here's what I suggest. If you have cable or satellite and you have streaming options, I'd consider loading up the streaming option on a laptop or a phone, and then load up the game on the TV using your cable or satellite box. See which one is ahead and go with that one on your TV. If the streaming version on your phone is in the lead, pull up that streaming service on your TV and don't look back. Okay, now that we've done some work on making sure we get the best source signal, let's talk about settings for your TV. In most cases, using the streaming app built right into your TV is gonna give you the easiest path toward making sure that HDR works for you. So if you stream, consider using the app built into your TV. If you're using a streaming box or if you're using a cable or satellite box, there's one critical setting that I want you to check. Now, some TVs like this Samsung Neo QLED here are great about recognizing a 4K HDR signal and automatically changing this setting for you. But other TVs don't, and it's always best to check just to be sure. So what you wanna do is find the setting area that talks about the HDMI input signal or enhanced HDMI options. On the Samsung Neo QLED, we go to Settings, External Device Manager, and then Input Signal Plus. Others call it Enhanced HDMI. 
Make sure this is turned on for whichever HDMI port your box is connected to. That is, if you wanna be certain that you get the HDR to kick in. In this case though, the Samsung TV has already made that adjustment for us automatically, but it's nice to know for sure. Next, you may wanna adjust the backlight or OLED light intensity of your TV for the most vivid picture. A lot of TVs have a sports mode that does this automatically, but for the most accurate color, I like the movie or cinema mode, maybe even filmmaker mode, and then we crank the brightness up a bit. Now from there, you may want a little motion smoothing turned on for the game. You may already use this, but if you're usually not into motion smoothing, you may wanna turn it on and dial it down so that you get the perfect blend of smooth motion and natural looking picture. On our Samsung TV here, we can go into settings, then picture, then expert settings, go down to picture clarity settings, turn it on, and then choose custom. And then try setting the blur reduction and judder reduction down to about one or two. I find a lot of folks like the way that this keeps the fast action clear and smooth without going into full on soap opera effect. Now keep in mind that every TV brand calls its motion smoothing something different. If you wanna learn more about that, check out our video on how to turn motion smoothing on or off. Also, I've got a link down in the description for how to pick the best TV picture settings for sports if you wanna dig in a little more. Next, let's talk about audio. Whether you've got a surround system or you're using your TV's built-in speakers, there's an issue that sometimes pops up when watching big games like this. Oftentimes, surround sound processing adds a lot of stadium sound excitement to the game. And that can be great, but Depending on your equipment, sometimes the surround sound effects can actually drown out the sports announcers. If you run into that, try playing with the different surround modes on your TV or audio system. In some cases, you may wanna try turning it off entirely. Or if you have the ability, you may wanna turn down the surround channels just a bit. Or better yet, pump up the center channel level so you can more clearly hear the announcers and still get all of that awesome stadium surround effect. Now I wanna share some advice I always give around this time of year. You may be looking at getting a new TV ahead of the game, and I think that's a great idea. The prices on TVs this time of year are generally the best they're ever gonna be. Now's a great time to get a bigger screen for less money. I just wanna remind you all that you'll be living with this TV for many years to come. So just remember, this is an investment in years of enjoyment and memories. Absolutely look for a great deal. I just suggest looking for a great deal on the most premium TV you can afford. You'll thank yourself long after the confetti's been swept up. Also remember, I usually encourage folks to go with the biggest screen at the best quality they can afford. It's a balancing act, sure, but I found that even though folks think that a big TV is gonna feel a bit too much in their home, once it actually is in their home, they often wonder how they could ever have gone smaller. I rarely hear anyone say they wish they had bought a smaller TV. So just keep that in mind when shopping. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, would you do me a solid and smash the like button? Subscribe if you'd like to see more awesome tech content. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.